let's get started with energy manipulation. One of the most, if not the most popular ability that is found in every single medium that exists and well, ever exist, and that's not an exaggeration either, users of ergokinesis can create, shape, and manipulate energy. <laughs> now this next part's gonna suck because the term energy is so freaking subjective. So let's see if I can pin down a simple definition for you guys. Energy, in its simplest of terms, is the capacity or the ability to cause change or do work. That was as simple as I could have gotten because energy itself is one of the most basic quantitative properties of any system and can be transformed or converted into a number of different forms that may each manifest and be measurable in different ways. So simply put, energy is found everywhere and is the reason for everything. Common physical forms of energy include the kinetic energy of a moving object, the radiant energy carried by light and other electromagnetic radiation, and various types of potential energy such as gravitational and elastic. But with how much energy influences existence as a whole, if one were lucky enough to be blessed with this awesome behind power, it would be the ultimate superpower, like the ultimate. As one who can control energy is only limited by their vitality and imagination, both of which run off of energy. Just an FYI. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy how important this power is and also the concept behind the power. I mean, if you think about it, without energy, the internet wouldn't exist, YouTube wouldn't exist, <laughs> and this channel surely wouldn't exist because I am a very lazy person and without energy to, you know, get me to do anything, you guys would pretty much be SOL. Hey, you guys wouldn't even be able to hit that like and subscribe button. But you wonderful nerd and nerdess don't suffer from that horrible condition like I do because uh, you're here, obviously. So while you're here, do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button. Because while energy is fleeting, it can be conserved. And if you want to pass on that knowledge found here, along with whatever energy you gathered, then hit that share button to let others know. If you're just here for the applications, uses, and users of this power, then skip ahead to this time. But if you're ready to E equals MC squared with me, then, um, hmm, that, that didn't really, <clears throat> okay, the history of energy really isn't that hard to pin down. If I understand energy correctly, and it took me a while to start this video because I kind of lack that knowledge, well, in order to make it into a video for you guys to understand, the Big Bang at the beginning of the universe is believed to be the ultimate cause of energy and matter as it expanded from one infinitely compressed point. <laughs> from there, the movement of this force, or kinetic energy, was the catalyst for things such as uh, stars forming, which then created gravity and magnetism and light and other forces that attracted planets and then created life and blah, 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 so on and so on. You guys know the rest. But from a human perspective, the very first energy source if you can call it that was the sun providing both heat and light from there we believe the earliest direct use of a uh, earth-based or a geothermic power occurred at least ten thousand years ago in north america where indigenous peoples were drawn to hot springs for both you know spiritual and practical reasons obviously and later the discovery of lightning which illuminated the darkened sky and then struck something flammable sparking a fire and it was that discovery of fire which was then used for many uses from cooking to an additional source of heat and light moving on from there though but still over eight thousand years ago humans discovered that sails could be used to harness wind energy for transportation of a sort which brings us closer to the present as the greeks used water wheels for grinding wheat into flour which was a little bit more than 2000 years ago and uh, let's not forget how manual labor from animals can provide massive amounts of energy in order to help with things like uh, construction agriculture which exist under the domain of kinetic energy aka manpower or in this case animal power but energy as we know it still existed within legends of mythology <laughs> the funny thing though it existed in forms that the people of that time could comprehend and what they could comprehend at the time was the elements in the world that they lived in and mythology has numerous examples of that, and I really do mean that. But the most important ones found throughout numerous world cultures that can be compared to each other were solar gods, which represented heat and or light, gods of motion, which include but are not limited to messenger gods, transporter gods, gods of music or sound, and 
gods of war. While on the other hand, or foot, storm, sky, or nature gods who were either personifications or wielders of uh, the landscape, weather, and electricity could be classified under this, in addition to the literal gods who represented abstract concepts like uh, strength and power. More often than not, you're going to find these beings, you know, the energy gods of the categories I just mentioned before, being in important positions within their respective pantheon if they aren't outright leading them to begin with. Which tends to make sense because energy is just as important to gods as it is to humans. <laughs> Apparently. Okay, now let's get the simple stuff out of the way. Or at least try to. <laughs> the law of conservation of energy states that the total energy of a system can increase or decrease only by transferring it in or out of a system. This means that in order to do something, the energy has to be acquired from somewhere, be able to be stored, and then when used, it's lost or transferred somewhere else. This is a universal fact of existence, as far as we humans know. So, when Albert Einstein himself said E equals MC squared, or energy equals mass times the speed of light squared, on the most basic level, the equation means that energy and mass, aka matter, are interchangeable and oftentimes indistinguishable, as they're just different forms of the same thing. Well, more like matter is a form of energy, but any shit. Think about it like this if you're still having trouble. If an object has a certain level or a certain kind of mass, then in order to change it in whatever way you can imagine, you would need the same or a greater level of energy to affect it, which essentially makes them equal. Hence, E equals MC squared. Energy as a concept, however, normally gets confused with other concepts such as power, force, or even strength. And while they are synonyms in a way, Energy is considered the glue of physics because without it, all other concepts wouldn't exist the way we really want them to or the way we need them to. But in a chicken and egg kind of argument, I guess you could say that energy is also the byproduct of things that exist in order to help other things exist. I don't know, whatever came first. But when it comes to the different types of energy, that's right, there's an endless list that will make up future videos, so stay tuned for that. Its output is usually quantified and measured in units of joules. That applies to any form of energy, whether it's sugar turning into chemical energy within an organic system after consumption, two objects being rubbed together to create heat energy via friction, wind emitting enough force to push a windmill, an explosion going off and releasing massive amounts of kinetic energy, or even hitting a light switch so that the room can be illuminated with a uh, light energy. <laughs> the main thing that this ability shares, no matter what form it exists in, is motion. In fact, that's like the number one facet behind this power. Because if you think about it, the power that comes from a physical strike is greater if there's a degree of speed and distance behind it. And you need energy to close that distance. In fact, most if not all materials would wither, rot, and or shatter if the molecules that make up whatever substance you want to choose stop moving. And in order to keep those molecules moving, they need energy or at least be able to maintain the energy they already produce or contain. <laughs> so symbolically, Energy represents movement, change, transformation, and life. As just like with matter, energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed into other states or other forms. <laughs> and as a fun fact, there's no such thing as a pure energy. It has to exist in a state that can be more or less detected. So that's why we have the different classifications of energy. Like I said before, kinetic energy, electricity, whatever, whatever. But getting back into this concept as a superpower, oh boy, this concept and thus the power are responsible for everything that happens in fiction, even other superpowers, which gives it the title as the king of plot devices. Normally, energy in these mediums are portrayed as uh, another form of matter rather than just simply a property of it. I think you guys know what I'm trying to talk about here. In particular, it's usually represented as some form of soft, warm, glowy kind of matter. In the vast majority of mediums, that representation of energy has properties that can be manipulated by the user in whatever manner they choose, by either channeling, you know, their willpower or personality into it, while at the same time being able to be turned on and off at a whim. Obviously, that's not how energy really works, but because it's common for story mediums to <laughs> ignore the laws of physics when it comes to this power in order to not have to explain a whole lot of stuff, you'll normally find humanoid-sized beings being able to output the same amount of energy as, a, let's just say, a city, which begs the question of where they got that energy from in the first place or where they were storing it to begin with. 
And don't even ask how they figured out how to generate that much energy in the first place. Suffice to say, any character with this power is going to need a slew of secondary superpowers because those secondary superpowers usually explain how energy manipulation works in the first place. Well, how it works for the user. This ability has numerous ways it can be shown when it is used in popular culture, and it is pretty much used a lot. Normally, it'll take the form of a monochrome or polychrome type of light show. It can take the form of some type of energy ball or light orb, which is usually used offensively, and or condensed into a circular form through some kind of willpower or personal gravity control, I have no idea. There's also the ability to transform into a mass of energy, like an energy being under your own power, or you can just surround yourself in energy to enhance your physical form, which will normally show itself as some sort of light-based aura surrounding you. But it doesn't stop there, there's also examples of users using laser blades, sword beams, energy wave emissions, laser guns, and other types of energy weapons that fire out short bursts of light. And these can either be portrayed as electrical-based energy or heat-based energy, just depending on the interpretation. Borrowing themes from light manipulation, check that video out. There's also the hard light deflector shields that are either found on spaceships or anything that's technologically advanced enough. You know, this is usually found in futuristic or sci-fi settings. There are also hard light constructs or projections where light energy is given mass and a defined physical shape. There's also the Star Trek matter replicator or matter transporter for those who actually want to say it right, which either tends to make things out of pure energy or turn things into pure energy in order to transfer it somewhere else. That's obviously impossible to do, but moving on, it can even be used as a plain old power source to, you know, advance machinery or in a magical world type setting, it could be used as a form of energy that powers spells and thus becomes a plot device like I mentioned earlier. But that's not where this list ends because there's also examples of it being used as a type of element like fire, earth, water, and air. Or the inverse, there might be an actual elemental substance that's called energy to the people of that medium, but to us looks like fire or electricity or even water. But uh, to be honest with you guys, any user of this power, even the lower tier ones, are just one step away from defying the laws of reality, making them god-level beings as... <laughs> Energy, as we understand it in our world, has so many rules that popular culture really needs to ignore them in order to do more of the flashy stuff that you guys tend to admire. When shown, however, users of this ability stereotypically have high levels of attack power, the highest level of speed comparable to light manipulation, check that video out, the link is in the description, medium to high levels of defense, as they can just enhance themselves with energy in various ways, and immense versatility, ranging into the infinite, as energy is the cause and the byproduct of almost, of pretty much everything that exists. So with that being said, common colors associated with a power like this range the spectrum, and honestly, it really depends on the type of energy being portrayed, so the color itself is extremely subjective to the medium that you're using it in. Plus, real life energy doesn't have a color, so there's that. Personality-wise, however, you'll find users of this power being, uh, full of life and, uh, oh god, energetic. Ha ha ha, who wrote this crap? But because this power can exist in many different ways within a particular medium, the personality really can range, so do whatever you want to. But common visual tropes include a glowing body, glowing eyes, glowing body parts, which overflow with radiant light energy, as well as lighter colored hair, which uh, also glows. You, you can't forget anything that glows, basically. Really can't go wrong with portraying this. Just use your imagination and make sure it glows. But unfortunately, that's where part one of this amazing power ends. Yes, I know it is very, very sad. So remember to hit that like and subscribe button. I appreciate your support, and I'll see you guys in part two of this video.